Hallelujah. Glory be to God. A very, very, very good morning to you and welcome to another edition of the Covenant Light. We're going to go into a time of worship. My name is Noel Manufo. And as we go into this time of worship, I want you to um, go ahead and as we have done during the 70 days of restoration, send this link to as many people as you can. It will be a teaching that will touch and transform their lives. If you have someone who is a believer that has not yet embraced the mission of Jesus, or you have someone who has been skirting around the faith and have not committed to Jesus to make a difference in his life, this message today will really be transformative for them. So go ahead today, send this link to as many people as you can. Like I often say, when it's all said and done, what matters is not how we felt, it was not the goosebumps or the anointing we felt, but whose life we changed. And you will change someone's life as you send these links. Go ahead and send it as we go into a time of worship.
Oh, hallelujah. Go ahead, somebody, wherever you are. Just lift your hands to him. Worship him. Go ahead, speak in other tongues wherever you are right now. Pray in the spirit right now. Pray in the spirit right now. Pray in the spirit right now. Oh, Rabba Hasa, Pere Rebosha. Le Krobo Doso Ko Rabba Hasa. Le Gebolo Mohosha. Le Ke Ko Sakataya. Le Ke To Pragadesh Alamaha. Sweet Holy Spirit, I invite you to have your way. I invite you to have your way. Naiga Mora Galia Makora Brahasa Kataya. We receive your ministry. We receive your ministry. We receive the manifestations and demonstrations of the Spirit. Hey! Get out of us, Sataya Barabahati. Reboso Rabaye Kiria Balama. Yeah! Oh, oh, Ganana, Yuria Balaba, Yirabaye, Yarabaya Salabrata. Rebo Salabaye, the Jezo Bragada. Eh, Mako Salabaye, Kreto. Eh, Makanda Rabaye, Kela Braya. Lemos Adanana Magala Braha, Lemokora Bahase, Lemokora Brahande Lebosa, Lebrobodo Shalabaya Hase, Rekekora Bahase, Lemos of Bredia La Bahasa, Lekora Brahande Lebroko Tozolo Brobodosha, Eh, 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 Aleke bosa kana makose deli ya prada bosa robo bobo bosa taya bala mahasa mahane ne mo deli ya prada bosa ne re boko sheli ya bahasa ne mo hosa kala brahasa ne mo kora brahasa ne mo kora brahasa ne mo kora prada di ya le robo dos kera nande ne kora asko kora di ya kala mande. Le nom que so solo pradiga baye que todo lo brandando. Blessed be your holy name, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Go ahead wherever you are. Speak in other tongues right now. Speak in other tongues right now. Wherever you are. Ikane ne moko si pradia. Maleke bo shakala braha sheketelia. Nelly and Andre Gesila Mahagelia and Andre Gesuso Frenande. Lemo, okay. I see entrances. I see entrances. I stand in the office of a prophet right now. I see entrances. Entrances. Enter into what is yours. 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 I see God bringing about entrances. I see God bringing about entrances. Malie sobra diga la bahashe ketelia mande eronos kerenande li protege li brahashke rekora bahas gelianandre gesus of renante. I see entrances, I see doors. The Bible says, I have set before you an open door. Paul speaking said, The Lord has set before us an open door. There are all kinds of doors, doors into the hearts of men. But also doors into places, doors into people, doors into businesses, doors. But I see in the name of Jesus that there are entrances, the Spirit is enabling entrance. Entrance into new experiences in God. Entrances into new places. Entrances into places where they thought you could not step into. I see what has been walls and within that wall, doors are created. Somebody will testify of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Mali kelia mohos perenande speaking tongue somebody kelia non predigilia tobas le grombo tos cum predigala ma aske telia nande skirio non brege dis malia nandre gejida malia cam pronon de kelia hate a knee somebody's knee 
a, a, a problem, it's a problem with your knee is being healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive, I set you free from that pain in your knee. Be free of that pain from its very roots in the name of Jesus Christ. There's somebody listening to me. You, you, you got into a, a new role, a new position, a new place, um, something new. You stepped into a new thing, uh, either a role, a position, or a place, and you have been struggling um, since you got into it. And the Lord um, says to tell you that you are in your acclimatization process. And do not be weary, do not be uh, fatigued, do not be troubled. You will acclimatize, you will get used to it, and then you will begin to function. So give yourself some time. Give yourself some time. You are acclimatizing. That's the word in my spirit. Disputes being settled. Disputes being settled. Disputes being settled. Disputes being settled. In your favor, God is bringing a closing of cases that are pending in the name of Jesus Christ and a settling of disputes in your favor in the name of Jesus Christ. You thought, who will fight for me? Because the enemy, what he has arrayed against me is much and it will cost me a lot to fight the battle. But God is saying, I will fight for you and I will bring an end to the dispute and settle it. I see people gathered together and trying to arbitrate. And God is saying, I will settle it in your favor. Glory to God. I need to be honorable. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Give you praise, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name forever. Blessed be your holy name forever. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we worship. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Now, I want you to pray with me and begin to pray in the Spirit while I go into the teaching of the Word. I want to lead you in a prayer. Say with me, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your will be done in my life. Let your kingdom be manifest on this earth. Let your kingdom be manifest. Let your kingdom come and be manifest in my location, in my vocation. And then let your will be done on earth and let your will be done in my life and that of my family in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you. I pray for the people that I am reaching, the people that I am shining your light before. I pray for them also that your will be done in their lives, that they come to the knowledge of the truth and to salvation in the name of Jesus. Now begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. He will pray all of those things and even more as the Spirit, as, as, as the Father desires it. You go ahead, pray in the Spirit as you listen to the Word of God. Father, I ask you for revelation knowledge to dawn upon our hearts as we look into your word. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Today, I want to talk to you um, from the book of John chapter 8 and verse 12. It's still about this purpose. I told you that we will continue with the things that we uncovered during the 70 days of restoration. And we are continuing with this mission of Jesus and the provision for the mission. They are abounding in finances and wealth and abounding for the mission. Those two directions, that is where we concluded the 70 days of restoration. Um, in John chapter 8 and verse 12, the Bible says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Notice what it means to follow Jesus. It is to not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Now, whoever follows Jesus will not walk in darkness. 
whoever follows Jesus will have the light of life. Now, walking in the light of that life is our choice. But having that life is automatic. The moment you give your life to Jesus, you now have the light of life. The light that comes from the life of God that is in you. The light that comes from that kind of life that Jesus had and that Jesus lived. The moment you give your life to Jesus, you received that life. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 to 12, He who has the Son has this life. He who has the Son. The Bible says, and this is the testimony, that God, from verse 11, has given us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. He who has the Son, verse 12 says, has life. And he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Okay, so the moment you give your life to Jesus, you now have this life. So Jesus said it this way. He said, whoever will follow me, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness. So following Jesus is not just having the life, it's choosing to walk in the light of that life. But whoever follows me will have the light of life. Now, that person now needs to make a choice to walk in the light of life. And so, because of your possession of this life, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. So you are the light of the world. Why? Because you have this life. You know, John chapter 1 and verse 4 says, In him was life. Talking about Jesus. And the life was the light of men. Can you see that clearly? That life is the light. Whoever has that life has the light of life. And that person is the light of the world. Not a light of the world, but the light of the world. Because it is the life. In him was life. And the life, the life was the light of men. So if you have that life, you have the light. If you have the life, the life of God. You have the light. And so you have the light. So you are the light of men. You are the light of the world. Now, this is interesting. It says you are a city set on a hill. Now, you can choose to shine or not shine, but you can't choose whether or not you are a city set on a hill. You can choose to walk in the light of life or not, but you can't choose whether you have the light of life or not. You are a city set on a hill. I find that word very interesting, set. That you have been set on a hill. Many of us don't know it, but you've been set on a hill. (laughs) Glory to God. You've been set on a hill. You see, what you think just happened was divinely orchestrated. Oh, it just happened that I live in Kilimani. I'm sorry, sir. You are a city set on a hill. God predetermined your appointed time and your dwelling places. The Bible says so. In uh, uh, um, in Acts chapter 17. From verse 26. And he has made from one blood. Every nation of men. To dwell on all the face of the earth. And has determined. Watch this. Their pre-appointed times. So God had determined when you will show up on planet earth. God planned for you to be at this time, in this season, in this dispensation, in 19, 2022, and from when you were born in 19 something or 20 something to this moment, God had deci- designed and decided, predetermined, pre-appointed your times. And not only that, he also pre-appointed the boundaries of your dwellings. 
dwellings, plural, dwellings, the different places that, the different spaces that you will exist at the pre-appointed times. Pre-appointed spaces of existence, pre-appointed times. You thought you live where you live because you couldn't afford somewhere else. But God says, everywhere you find yourself and every time you find yourself, I pre-appointed you to be as a city set on a hill, a light to a people. That's why I keep talking about looking around you for what God is doing. Looking at beginning to see the, the, the mighty hand of God. In your placement and placing. Oh, I walk in so-so bank because my father knows the MD. Well, before before you were ever born, someone arranged for your father and that MD to go to school together. And see, the, the thoughts of God, the Bible says, are too wonderful. He thinks millions of moments ahead of time. And all culminating in you walking in that bank. A friend you gave, you shared your meal with in school was the one that connected you to the person whose brother now connected you to the bank. Well, all of that, the Bible said, was predetermined, pre-appointed, preset. You are a city set on a hill. The people around you, and look at what the Bible says is the reason. The people around you are meant to begin to draw closer to God because of you and you are meant to begin to draw closer to God because of them look at the Bible it continues it says he set the pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings verse 27 so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him though he is not far from each one of us In other words, that pre-appointing and predestination and pre-assigning and pre-time and all of that was so that men can reach reach him and touch him and encounter him. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I can understand if God has set me in Kilimani, if God has set me in my bank, the different spaces that I exist, I exist at my workplace, I exist at my home, I exist at the gym. I exist. I have my circle. I have my way. I have my boundaries. I have these places where if you didn't see me here, you check for me there. If you didn't see me there, you check for me over there. People who know me will know the different places, my dwellings, the different places I exist. I understand that God put me in those places as the light of the world so that people can draw closer to him because of me. So that they can see me, see something, and draw closer to him. But then, how is it that I am to draw closer to God by being in those places? And the answer is simple. Because in you trying to reach them, when you realize that you are not just something that showed up somewhere sometime. No, you are someone that showed up at a pre-appointed place at a pre-appointed time, that exists in a pre-appointed space and spaces at a pre-appointed time, and that the purpose is to bring men to the knowledge of the truth, when you realize that and you begin to try to get that done, even you yourself will begin to draw closer to God. You will have to co-labor with Him. You will have to walk with Him Or you will not be able to do anything. And so you are getting drawn to God. They are getting drawn to God. Everybody is getting drawn to God. And that's the reason why he pre-appointed our times. And pre-appointed our boundaries. When you understand this, you ask yourself, so why and how can I begin to make this difference? 